we're going to be discussing again here the value of art and pricing. So when it comes to performing arts, pricing can be somewhat difficult, somewhat um, subjective and a little bit risky perhaps at times, particularly if audience members perhaps do not um, feel that they had a good experience. So how do you feel about the statement and, and what's your experience in relation to, to the subject? Perhaps we can start with you, Leanne. Uh, I, I think it depends on the point of view. If you see it from the point of, the, of view of the artist, obviously when you put up a production, there are so many expenses. And even like a price, like when you hear 20 euros for a performance, you're like, no, it looks too expensive. But actually, it's not from the artist's point of view because mm -hmm. there are even, you know, the theater venue. And then you start, when you start, like, for example, we devise a lot of projects. So when you start devising, you start off, with a little, you know, project, you need maybe a few light cues, you know, some props, and you're okay at the start. But yes. after, after a month of devising, you end up with a big project. And that is when you start realizing that the pricing uh, needs to shift or needs to reflect the expenses that you're having during the show. So, um, yeah, I understand that from, a, from an audience point of view, especially people who don't go to the theater, a price tag of 20 euros is very expensive, and I understand that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I remember, you know, we used to start off with like 10 euros, used to be the kind of the go-to. Uh, exactly, up to a few years ago. Yeah, I'm it was a go-to price, wasn't yeah. it? But now, I mean, 20, 25 euros, uh, it's not pricey. Obviously, say, having said that, when I look at theatre that we've done, for example, in the streets, um, uh, I don't think we should put, put a price tag to theatre in the streets uh, because that is where theatre started from and I think uh, we should cherish things, we should cherish roots, mm -hmm. you know, and not put a price tag on everything because I think there's extremes as well. First we start off doing everything for free and now we're putting a price to everything. So it's nice, it's nice to find a bit of a balance yes. where the audience find performances which are 5 euros, 10, 20, 25, free stuff, 100 euros. So you give opportunity to different audiences to experience, it, to experience different genre mm -hmm. of theatre. Also, mm -hmm. perhaps depending on how that is supported, because the, the artist still needs to be paid and it's, yes. it, it's still work, right? So yes, that's, that's something we're still struggling, struggling with. with exactly Pam, in fact i think what what i think um a client so to speak needs to bear in mind whether your client is the audience or whether it is a producer mm -hmm. you know putting a price tag to your production in general and selling the production to a theater possibly i think what one needs to keep in mind is that you are not the value isn't of that one hour performance that you are seeing, but it is of a process. And um, the process, one has to keep in mind, starts way before mm -hmm. the performance date, possibly months, if not sometimes even possibly a year before. You know, you have to keep in mind there's the research which happens before the performance, so the time that the, the director or the creator um, comes up with a concept. So even that in itself is a value, you know, um, the concept, and how to develop the concept so the the what we would call the intellectual property you know of the creator exactly. has to have a value um so starting off from there um and possibly and then also involving your collaborators so for example in my case uh, meeting with musicians or composers dramatics and involving the people involved in your production so professionals in their own right so that is a lot of work which is done prior to even entering a studio mm -hmm. and working with in my case would be with the dancers who are professionals in their own right. So if I am working with five, six professional dancers and I have four weeks work, then calculate a four week salary, professional salary, and that is the amount that they need to get paid. And then obviously the costs are put together like Leanne was saying, and it is divided into how many seats you have in the theater. Ultimately, everybody's working to make a profit. I mean, it's important to stress that we do not enter a studio because it is a hobby. So it's okay whether we make a profit or loss or break even. No, there is um, 
a value to it, a professional value to it, and this is how we must be looking at it to give it the value that it deserves and to be working at a profit. The, obviously, there, I agree with what Le Leanne was saying. That, we have a different target audience, you know what I mean? So once you sit down at your research, research stage, you are thinking of your audience. Who is my audience? Mm -hmm. Is this an outreach project where I am doing it to um, um, attract as many people as possible so that maybe I instill um, so, for example, like a lot of children's performances, which are vital for us to be able to build this culture of theatre. You know what I mean? So, what am I looking at there? How am I going to price that? Because I do want, and obviously, yes, we do have to make it accessible, but without lowering our standard exactly, and yeah, the and value mm -hmm. of what art really is. Exactly. You know, because there is a lot of time and energy, like in any other um, professional. Um, uh, job, you know, that that goes into this mm -hmm. work, and and there's a lot of the the process is hidden as such. It's not something which yes. you see. Um, this is why I'm, I said it's important to realize that there is a process that leads to that one hour performance. Because exactly. some people will tell you what X amount for 15 minutes choreography. No, but obviously 15 minutes choreography is not 15 minutes of work. Mm -hmm. It is hours of work. Exactly. You know. But I think when it comes to the audience, I think all the, sw all the blood, sweat and tears is never seen. We never showed a bit. I think, I think then the skill in a way is to show the audience that actually they can do it themselves. The audience yes. sometimes sit and they can say, Lalo, it's, it's beautiful, Lalo. I, I can actually do that. Well, actually, you can't do that. I mean, we're making it, we're making it look really very easy, simple. so pleasant. <laughs> Okay, but you don't know, know how many bones I broke, <laughs> okay, how many Literally. shoes I <laughs> tore, <laughs> as that, you know. So, uh, uh, yes, yeah, sometimes that works against us, you know, that we are trying to make it look really easy and pleasant and enjoyable. But, it but is uh, of if I may add to that, it's true. However, I, th I, I do genuinely hope that um, people will start to understand the difference between a professional performance who ultimately reaches that level mm -hmm. yeah. of being able to be at ease yeah. and and yes hopefully be able to instill so much emotion in in the in the audience that they are able to believe that they can possibly do it themselves or that they have entered that journey themselves which you are trying to uh, to convey um, and between the amateur world and that yeah. is something which is also very important for a client and i say a client because your client could be the audience if i decide to put up a production privately or it could be a theater you know um to understand the difference between um uh, having professionals do the work and between doing having amateurs doing the work and i hope we do have this distinction this is like for example simple but still as uh, an art form if i buy go by a, a door I go to a factory and it's mass produced and then I have a carpenter who has actually done it. Mm -hmm. Chances are the carpenters is more expensive, but if I had to see it, I can yeah. understand why, mm -hmm. you know. But, so but Pam, if I may, in, in this, in this um, context where the lines between the amateur professional are very blurred, you know, um, because there are um, perhaps different levels of engagement with, um, with, with the art. So how do you make that? distinction right um well as, as long as it's a, a good production you, you can perhaps make a distinction between a good production and uh, a production which is not perhaps of standard but at the same time this starting off from professional versus non-professional it's a bit more subjective, yes it is a perhaps, very or difficult no i wouldn't uh, personally i wouldn't say it's it's subjective and i think anyone who understands in the field so for example if i had to watch a dance performance i think today um, with so much experience, I think you can easily tell whether it is a professional performance or an amateur one. Like I would assume the same would go for Leanne when it comes yeah. to, to theatre. There are many, uh, there's, you know, the detail which, which you, you t says it all. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, my biggest worry is can everyone see that and the people who engage the 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 production are they able to distinguish between a professional and an amateur because that obviously uh, the the pricing there the value 
is completely different and I do not expect someone amateur to be charging the same amount as someone professional and by that I do not mean it could be a very good performance you know what I mean I'm not judging a standard but someone who spends a full-time work day nine to five in a studio creating work and working on a performance with someone who does it for one hour a day is very different mm -hmm. you know this it's the same without quantity of time there is no quality of work mm -hmm. you know i mean quality and quantity of time go hand in hand so so what do you um think is the artist's responsibility here and bef um, earlier we mentioned the also the, the relationship with producers um that are also perhaps funding or giving giving a uh, a set fee for for your performance for your participation in, in a project so what is the the artist's responsibility should she he um kind of go for all kinds of prices or should there be some form of consensus? I, I, think, I think if you're doing it professionally you can't go for every project there's no way in hell or else you won't survive i think if you're doing it for a living you have to really weigh what you're doing uh, in terms of uh, quality uh, in terms of uh, pricing i mean you have to put a fee mm -hmm. and it's really hard sometimes because we don't have a set fee so when you have a project in your hand first of all you need to ask what the script is about who you're going to work with rehearsals is it going to be from is it going to be from monday till sunday i mean we work from yes. nine till five every <laughs> single day uh, and we don't have any other job that we go to because this is the job mm -hmm. um so one finding for example to have somebody to tell you you know we change contract or we change the fee in the middle of the project i mean that is crazy because when you go to a doctor and he gives you his fee you don't ask the doctor, uh, but yeah, but you know, can you give me half the medicine and I half survive this? <laughs> no, you just, you know, you don't question, you pay. So yeah, it, it's, we were struggling with this, but I think in terms of artists, yeah, we always have to weigh, being a full timer, you always have to weigh what you have in your hands. And you can never say yes to each production that comes along. You need to say, hey, this is my standard this is my fee it changes according to the standard of living and uh, this is what i produce this is what i you know this is my level this is where mm -hmm. i'm at you either join me or you don't work with me anymore you know the the world is huge it's not a problem there's always an opportunity <laughs> um so it, i think it's a first it's a, an inner first it's an inner journey and then you you know you give it out to, to the to the universe whoever and you're you work, working with yeah you work with the same vibrations whoever you know is on the mm -hmm. same frequency yes i agree i mean you have to set a value to your work and you must keep it i mean of course it's it, it's not easy i mean leanne brought the example of the doctor uh, um uh, you you go to the doctor you feel sick you have to go with us it's maybe possibly more of a luxury in terms but of is it, is is it it? a luxury uh, that's why i say it when they were dying <laughs> they had music playing so <laughs> i see it a bit skeptically you know what i mean can <laughs> you do without it we i do don't need know it, though. we need it yes our soul needs, needs. I, I feel the same but does the, everyone feel that way i don't know it's questionable but yes of course I, possibly I it's also taken for granted as well so yes it's, it's there, yes but it's yes yes but yes no you have to put a value and it's important of the value and it is important that each and every single body who works in the field puts a value to the work because if x doesn't then it's bringing down my value mm -hmm. you know what i mean and this is very dangerous exactly. and i see this happening which is why i say it and it angers me at the same time i feel there is a lot of education that still needs to be done even within our sector you mm -hmm. know what i mean mm -hmm. so we are talking about our clients we are talking about the audience we are talking about theater people producers etc but what about the people who work in the industry and are ready to sell it so cheaply yes you know i mean for me that's a fundamental problem because obviously it has lowered my standard and i am not ready personally to lower my standard because there has been a lot of 
time and effort which I have invested in studying my art and my craft, let alone coming to the point where Leanne mentioned, you know what I mean, the, the, the sweat, the blood and the tears are happening while I'm working. Mm -hmm. But before that, there has been um, endless years of studying, which I wouldn't like to bring down to nothing, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. So in this case, because we, we did, I think at one point, um, we did mention standards or standardization. Now it's very, very difficult to standardize prices in a free market, right? And yes. perhaps it's not correct even to, to mention that, but how do you create um, effective pricing strategies as in do you feel that there is need for some sort of guidelines for some sort of reference point um, so that uh, fees are more fair so in terms of pricing mm -hmm. we're not talking about ticket sales we're much more talking about fees and yes. from the artist's point of view yes. um, I mean when I was in London there used to be a price point um, uh, in London there, there, there was this uh, union that used to yes. safeguard our mm -hmm. jobs, you mm -hmm. know, it used to be called, it is called oh. equity. And this is something that we haven't even touched here in Malta. And I feel that we need to go there and we need to start talking about it because uh, unions like equity and, uh, you know, the way it, it, it works in London is that there is a standard fee that you need to get paid weekly if you're working full time in a project. This is not rocket science, you know, I'm talking like this is super basic life skills, okay? Um, uh, so when you go into, into a production, imagine you have an artist who doesn't know how to price themselves, mm -hmm. okay? At least there's this union that tells you, hey, listen, okay, no stress, 500 euros a week, start off with that. If it goes, you know, five, five weeks, you get this and that, yes. you know, and that's your base. That's your base. You have something to fall back on. And then if you feel that you have more knowledge and expertise, you can go to a producer and tell him, listen, yeah, I want that basic pay, but then I want an extra 200 because I've, I bring this to the table. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah, I do feel we need to get to a point where there is a basic sum mm -hmm. which get paid every week to a full timer. Yes, we need to go there because it's not easy to price it. Exactly. It gets easier by time because mm. every time you do a project, you realize you are, ah, okay, oh, mm -hmm. right you know, so, so you're learning every time. Um, but we have so many full timers now, you know, and this is no, we're not in the stone age anymore. Now we went, we studied, you know, we became professionals and mm -hmm. we're here. Mm -hmm. We're mm -hmm. full timers. So yeah, why not have a set of rules, of basic rules, I'm mm -hmm. not talking... As a guideline. A guideline, guideline. Mm -hmm. to say, okay, basic, this is the basic, all right? We don't even need to discuss it. If you're going to approach me to work on a project, that's the basic. That yes. needs to be there. It's exactly. We don't mm -hmm. even need to sign any contracts. Mm -hmm. That's the basic. No stress. Mm -hmm. But then if I bring something else to the table, if I'm bringing a, an extra talent, okay, then yeah, we discuss, we revise that basic sum. Yes. But yeah, I think I think that is where we need to go at this at this point. Um. Yes, yes, I do agree that there is there needs to be some sort of guidelines. One possibly again for uh, also for the people who are starting out to have a bit of an idea of how this could work. Um, one, like I said before, not to lower their value and not to val lower the value of the art in general. Exactly. You know what I mean? Which is, again, like I said, fundamental. Also, I think it's good because um, not only from the artist's point of view, but even for, for the people who are commissioning the work, they have an understanding of how much that work actually exactly. is worth. And they I can mean, price and they can exactly. budget. And so it's, see, it's kind of to be honest, sometimes I feel my biggest problem because we started off this conversation talking about the, the audience. Mm -hmm. I'm not exactly sure if the audience is the biggest problem. Sometimes I feel it's people who are commissioning the work who are the problem, the problem in terms of not understanding the value of what they are really commissioning. I'm not saying everybody, but you still find a lot of people who are commissioning work and who lack an understanding of what is what me as an artist, mm -hmm. what I'm actually budgeting for. What, what is involved. And in, what in is involved, work. you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So that is where the discrepancy lies. So this guideline kind of, I think, would give a clearer picture to both sides of the table, really, mm -hmm. not but, just to... But let's say someone who is approaching us, for example, to give us a uh, work, they don't understand the work. Okay, I, I respect that. Okay, not everyone understands the world. But if, if we're being commissioned 
and the person who is giving us the commission to work doesn't understand the industry, that is even more. That, that's a, that, that is where you need to be in a position of really trusting that the artists know what they're doing, you know? Yes. So, so <laughs> as a commissioner who doesn't understand the job, you cannot dictate to me yeah. how much it involves. That, yeah. that, it, but it, I still feel that there relies of a problem there. Yes, you know? and that mm -hmm. is the problem. I should yeah. be telling you how much it costs and how it, much it works. Exactly. How like, much it, uh, in the same way, it works for everything again yes, like if exactly. i go to buy a product yeah. i know because uh, most of the time people who approach us to do the work they're not doing it some mm -hmm. of them you yes. know except for producers very it, few in fact if i may say you know so yeah i i, I think we, there's a lot of reworking and rewiring of the neurons of our brains <laughs> that need to uh, you know be reassessed yes and um, for me my biggest concern for example is the education you know if children are not being equipped, you know, and experienced, they need exposure, they need to be exposed to dance, they need to be exposed to theater and to the arts, you know, stay, you know, looking in front of a painting for an hour. You need to be exposed. If you're not exposed at a, at a young age, it's really hard to do it when you're older. It's hard. You know, when I look at my parents, I don't see my father looking at a painting, you know, it's it's late, it's too late, That's from you then. know? Yeah. Yeah. Whereas if you're young and you already have it in your muscles, you know, you already have it in your bones, then it's a muscle memory thing. Yes. You grow up and you just mm -hmm. enjoy being mm -hmm. at the Tate for five hours. There is certainly <laughs> much more to say yes. about yes. pricing, about yes. artist fees and about the subject. I, I really hope that this session creates um, some form of debate around the, the subject and perhaps also um, solutions can be, can be put forward, can be presented and can be discussed among artists, among producers. I thank you, Leanne, for being here. Thank, thank you, you, Pam, <laughs> for joining us today. Um, that brings um, today's session to, to conclusion. I would like to thank all the participants um, who joined um, our session um, feel free to leave any comments uh, as I said before it's it's important that the conversation is generated a discussion is generated around the subject so feel free to leave any comments in the comment section below see you very soon for another session um, of the ACM hangouts thank you very much <laughs>